We're going to begin chapter 4, but instead of starting with 4.1, I'm going to just start off with nomenclature. So in the early 19th century, organic compounds were named on the whims of their discoverers, and as the number of known compounds grew, we needed a systematic nomenclature system. The systematic nomenclature system is based upon the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, also known as IUPAC. And so we're going to deviate from the book, and then I'm going to teach you all about nomenclature and the components of building a name. However, for your exam, you're only going to be responsible for alkanes and cycloalkanes. So what's in a name? We can break down the name into five components. Stereoisomerism, substituents, the parent chain, unsaturations, and the functional group. We're going to learn to build the name starting with the functional group, followed by unsaturations, then the parent chain, and then the substituents. In summary, first you're going to identify the principal functional group and the substituents. Then you're going to identify the longest continuous chain that contains the principal functional group, and then you need to assign locants or numbering to the principal functional group and the substituents. Below I have definitions, and I'm not going to go through them right now. So, let's look at what the, the functional groups are and how they're ranked from highest priority to lowest priority. So here we have the highest priority, and at the bottom of the table we have the lowest priority. Now I'm going to go through these functional groups, but you should know them already. So first we have a carboxylic acid. If we have a carboxylic acid, the, en the name ends in oic acid. Then we have an ester, and the name will end in eight. The next functional group that we have is an amide, and the name will end in amide. Then we have an aldehyde, which will end in AL. Then we have a ketone, and the suffix will be own. Alcohols, OL, and amine, amine. an ether, ether, an alkene, ene, an alkyne, ine, and then an alkane, A and E. Now these two groups here are unsaturations and we'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute. So if we look at this example here, it says to identify the functional groups and then identify the suffix when you identify the principal functional group. So here we have an alcohol, a halide, and an aldehyde. I didn't explicitly mention halides. They are just above alkanes in priority. and you change the name. Well, there's two conventions. You can change the name to Ide, or you can just use the halide as a, as a prefix. Okay. In this case here, we have an aldehyde. It's clearly the highest priority, so the name would end in Al. In the next compound, we have a ketone and an alcohol. So the suffix would be own. Then we have a carboxylic acid and an amine. So that the suffix would be oic acid. When we look at unsaturations, we're looking at double bonds and triple bonds. So here we have a saturated hydrocarbon, which is an alkane, and we will talk about them later followed by an alkene where we have the double bond and then an alkyne which has a triple bond. So if we 
have more than one double bond or triple bond, we have to use a prefix. When we have two, it's di, three, tri, four, tetra, five, penta, six, hexa, seven, hepta, eight, octa. Now, if we look at the compounds below, okay, we would see that these, the first compound has an alkene, and there are two alkenes, so it would be a diene. The next compound, geraniol, it has two double bonds and an alcohol. The suffix, the highest priority would be the alcohol, so the end would be all. But right before that, because we have two double bonds, it would be diene all. Then finally, the last compound, we have one, two, three, four triple bonds, so it would be a tetraene. Now what I want to go through is identifying the longest continuous parent chain, and this brings us to alkanes. So alkanes are hydrocarbons. They only contain carbon and hydrogen. They are saturated. Every carbon is sp3 hybridized and has single bonds. If you remember, unsaturated means we have double and triple bonds. So alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons. So when we only have one carbon, as we do here, this is called methane. Two carbons is called ethane. Three carbons, propane. Four carbons, butane. Five carbons, pentane. Six carbons, hexane. Seven carbons, heptane. Eight carbons, octane. Nine carbons, nonane. And ten carbons, decane. You need to know these parent names for one through ten. When we have a ring, as we do here, we add cyclo in front of the parent chain. So here we have cyclopropane with three carbons, then we would have cyclobutane, cyclopentane has five carbons, cyclohexane has six, cycloheptane for seven, and cyclooctane for eight. Now, if the longest continuous chain contains more carbons than the ring, then the ring is a substituent on the chain. If the ring contains more carbons than the longest chain, then the ring is the parent, and you assign the alkyl chain as a substituent. So let's look below and identify some of the parents in these compounds. Okay, so I'm going to number these now, and I'm numbering to identify the longest chain, but this is not the numbering that I would use if we were assigning locants or positions to the substituents. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So our longest chain is a hexane. The longest chain in B is a heptane. Okay. If you need to, pause the video and identify all the longest chains and then come back and check to see if it matches with what I've shown. Here for C, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So again, we have another heptane with D. Here you might think the longest chain is here, an octane, but it's actually a nonane. Oops. 
it looks like I skipped a carbon, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the longest chain is a no name. And the next one, the longest chain is here. It's an octane. In F, the longest chain is a heptane. In G, a cyclopentane. In H, a cycloheptane. And in I, a cyclopropane. If we go down to the next example, it says which two compounds have the same parent? So if we count carbons, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we go to the next one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the second one and the last one are both octanes. Now what I want you to do is to identify the functional group unsaturation and parent chain in each of the following molecules. So this is going to combine the last two steps that we did. In the first one, in A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here, the only functional group is the unsaturation. The unsaturation needs to be in the longest chain. So we would have a heptane as the parent, but because we have an alkene, it's a heptene. In B, we have another alkene, so the parent chain must contain the alkene. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, we have a heptene. In the next example, which is also letter A, we have a triple bond. The triple bond needs to be in the chain. Now here, be careful counting carbons. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. So here, we have a hexane as the parent. We drop the ane, and it's a hexine. Finally, in the last one, we have two bromines and an aldehyde. The aldehyde takes priority. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So here we have a hexane as the parent, but we're going to drop the E, and it's going to be hex and now. Now what we're going to go through is naming non-branched alkyl substituents. If we, let's look down here. If we look at some of these chains, what we can see is, I'll highlight the parent chain again. We have substituents coming off the parent chain a two-carbon substituent, and a one-carbon substituent. There are no branchings. It's just a straight chain. So when we have just a straight chain of alkyl groups, what we do is, is we take the ane and drop the ane and replace it with YL. So methane becomes methyl, ethane becomes ethyl, propane becomes propyl, butane becomes butyl, and so forth and so on. Now, when we had similar to how we had more than one double bond or triple bond, we used di, tri, tetra, penta, and hexa, etc. to indicate that. So in the examples, I already highlighted the parent chain in the first one, and then I identi and I 
circled the alkyl substituents. We have a methyl and we have an ethyl. In the next example, if I highlight the parent chain and then I circle the substituents, we can see we have a dimethyl and a propyl. Here we have a cyclopentane and a methyl group. The cyclopentane contains five carbons, the methyl group only has one, so the cyclopentane is the parent and the methyl is the substituent. Here again we have another ring. The ring this time has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the ring is the parent and we have two methyl substituents. So we have a dimethyl. In the last one, if we look here, the longest continuous chain, if I circle it, has eight carbons. The ring has only six. So the ring, instead of being a chain, is a substituent off the chain. We also have two methyls and an ethyl. So here we have methyl, dimethyl, we have ethyl, and cyclohexyl. So again, you drop the ane and replace it with YL. Now we're going to look at branched alkyl substituents. And these are a little bit more complex. When we have just one carbon, there's no branching. When we have two carbons, So essentially one, two, again, there's no different way to connect them. But when we have three, one, two, three, we can change the connectivity a little bit. So if we just have an unbranched substituent, it's called propyl. And you can see here, one, two, three. However, if we were to take one of these, instead of connecting the parent chain to the end, and connected it to the middle carbon, we would have what's called an isopropyl substituent. So these branch substituents have both common names and IUPAC names. And so the IUPAC name is 1-methyl-ethyl. And what you do is, if I just draw this out, okay, the way you get the IUPAC name is that the parent chain, the parent chain is connected at carbon 1 and then you label the substituent accordingly and so here we would have a methyl coming off the ethyl at position 1. Next, so that's the only way you can do three carbons. Then we have a butyl group. So when it's just a straight chain of four carbons it's called butyl. However, if we take the parent chain and then instead we take one of the methyl groups off the end and connect it at the second carbon, we have what's called an isobutyl group or 2-methylpropyl. And again, I'll draw that one out for you a little bit larger so that you have the parent chain. One two, three, so that you have a methyl group on the second carbon, so it's 2-methylpropyl. Then we have sec-butyl, where the parent chain is connected at the one carbon, and it's called 1-methylpropyl. And finally, we have tert-butyl, which is shown as, shown as such and is considered 1-1-dimethylethyl. We have a pentyl group, you can also have isopentyl, which is shown here, which is 3-methylbutyl, or neopentyl, which is known as 2,2-dimethylpropyl. I'd like you to be familiar with the branch substituents for 3 carbons and 4 carbons. And I know in class I said you only need to know the IUPAC names. I want you to be familiar with the common names as well. 
So in the next example, what we are going to do is, is we're going to circle the parent chain and identify the substituents. Okay. So in the first example, we have an unsaturation. So the unsaturation has to be in the longest parent chain. So there is our parent chain. Now what we can see is that we have one branch substituent and two methyl substituents. So it's a dimethyl. Now, if this was to be a common name, this would be isopropyl. IUPAC, it is 1-methyl-ethyl. We come to the second compound. Here we have an unsaturation. The unsaturation has to be in the chain. So what we can see is that we have a t-butyl substituent. Next, we have a ring. Okay. The ring has more carbons than any of the chains do. So you can see this is a one, two, three chain, continuous chain. One, two, three, four. Here the continuous chain is one, two, three, and here one, two. So six beats any of those chains. So now if we were to circle these as substituents coming off the ring, we would have one branch substituent, two branch substituents, and then an unbranched ethyl. So here's our ethyl. This is our t-butyl. And then we also have a sec-butyl. Or a one methylpropyl. And finally, when we come to the last chain, the longest continuous chain is circled. And you can see we have one, two, three, four substituents, one of which is, is branched. We have two methyls, an ethyl, and an isopropyl. When we have more than one type of functional group, what we need to do is, is we need to assign priority to the highest functional group, and then that will become the suffix. And then all other substituents will be added as prefixes. And so this table shows you that when we have an aldehyde, it's aldo, ketone, keto, alcohol, hydroxy, amine, amino, ether, alkoxy, and the halides fluoro, bromo, chloro, and iodo. You need to be able to recognize unsaturated substituents as well. Here we have a vinyl group where we have a carbon and a carbon. An allyl group where there's an extra carbon. Phenyl when the benzene ring is a substituent off a longer chain. And methylene. Again, for your exam, you only need to be responsible for alkanes. And we are not going to go over stereochemistry right now. So if we were to summarize our nomenclature, what we need to do is, again, identify the highest priority functional group. Then we are going to identify the longest parent chain that contains the highest priority functional group. If there are any saturations, that means double and triple bonds, the chain should contain those functional groups. And we're going to number the chain so that the highest priority functional group has the lowest number or lowest locant. We are going to assign locants or numbers to the remaining substituents. And then we are going to assemble the name based on the suffixes and prefixes that I listed above. So you take the ane of the parent chain and replace it with the suffix of the highest priority functional group. If the functional group is not at position 1 of the chain, then its locant is indicated. The prefixes are placed before the parent chain with appropriate locant numbers in alphabetical order. So you are going to arrange the substituents in alphabetical order, not numerical order. So let's look at these examples below. 
So here, the longest continuous chain is going to include the aldehyde, which is the highest functional group. The aldehyde is going to be position 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have a hexane. We also have two methyls and two bromos, two bromines. So when we assemble the name, the name will be the methyls are on the second position. The bromines are on position 5. B comes before M. We will not alphabetize based upon the di or tri. So here we would have 5, 5, di, bromo, 2, 2, di, methyl, hexane now, because we have to replace the ane with al. The next compound, we have an aldehyde, an alcohol, and a bromine. Aldehyde is the highest priority, so the chain needs to contain it. And it also has to have the lowest number. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, bromine comes before hydroxy, so it's 4 bromo. Hydroxy hexano. So this is the name of the second one. I'm going to run out of room here. All right, so for the next one, it's a cyclohexane. It needs to include the ketone, so it's a cyclohexanone. We're going to give that the lowest number, and then we want to give all the substituents low numbers too. So we're going to label the ring clockwise here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here, and I'll write it over here, we have two hydroxy cyclohexo hexa one own. The next chain needs to contain the carboxylic acid. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a hexanoic acid, so it's six amino hexanoic acid. And finally, we have a an unsaturation, so the chain needs to contain that unsaturation. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how we get the lowest number to the unsaturation. We have a methyl and a chlorine. C comes before L. So in the name, if I write it down here, it would be 3 chloro. 5-methyl hex-2-ene. Okay, so now we're going to practice with the unsaturations again and, and assembling the names. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put the names underneath and then you can double check your work. So I've written in the names and indicated the parent chain. Okay. What I'm going to do with the following examples, I'm going to just number them so that you can see where you're giving the unsaturation the lowest possible number, and then you can assemble the names if you would like. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. All right, if there's no functional group, double bond or triple bond, you're going to number the chain in the direction that gives the substituent the lowest number. 
So here, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And so that we have a two, two, and a three as far as the substituents go. With the next one, one, two, three, four, five, six. The substituent would be on position three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have the substituent on four. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, I skipped a carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so that we have the substituent on five. Here with the ring, you're going to put the substituent on position one. Same thing with the following ring, the substituents on position one of the cycloheptane. When you have multiple substituents on the parent chain, then you're going to number the chain so that the substituents get the lowest numbers possible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When I number the chain that way, my substituents are at six and seven. If I were to number going this way, one, two, three, let me change colors so that it's a little bit easier to see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So when I actually number that way, I get a longer chain. And so you can see that this is the parent's chain, and I have substituents at two, four, and five. Now, if we were to number the second molecule, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or I could try numbering one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if we follow the red chain, I'd have substituents at three. I have a 3-3, three, three, a 4-4, four, four, and an 8-8. Eight, eight. If I follow the blue chain, I have a 2-2, two, two, and a 6-6, six, six, and a 7-7. Seven, seven. So that's better because we're giving the first substituent the lower number. Right, so for the next one, the chain... would be as such, and we would number from here to here. There are several different possibilities to get seven in this chain, but we want the one that gives us two, three, four, and five for the substituents. And finally, here's the parent chain in the last one, and you're going to number it starting one there, ending with a nine there, and this would give us a four five substituent, which would be the lowest numbers. Okay. So also too, when you have multiple substituents, you want them to be the simplest. So you're going to choose the chain with the greatest number of substituents. And also too, in deciding how to number the chain, you should choose the chain where the first substituent has the lowest number. So here are some examples below for you to work with and practice naming. You're going to, for your exam, you'd be responsible for these and these. You can also try some practice with the ones with the higher order functional groups below. And so this ends our discussion of nomenclature.